where you'd be going down dirt roads and then there'd be cross washes, but then if you hit them fast enough, you could jump them. Yeah, I, I had a couple yeah. of those too. I had one, I, there was no danger sign, it was like a trophy truck road where it was like three three or four just big, but like, they weren't whoops because they were like real close together. They weren't like, it was like big deep tire tracks. And I'm coming out of like 50 pin, I'm like, oh crap, I didn't have enough time to break, so I kind of popped clutch a little bit, wheelie, oh, and just no. prayed over that. I like hit a rock. Somehow, I didn't even see it, just jumped right over it. First 20 miles was pretty dusty, just trying to fight through all the dust. Then I finally caught some fresh air and was able just to put in a, a good ride just to stay in my groove. It was honestly pretty lonely. I didn't get to see many riders out there. One guy passed me at one point, then I passed someone else back. I had a lot of fast section too. Like The last 30 miles was probably just six gear tap the entire time. Basically as fast as the bike can go, which as Jack found out, it's about 103, 104 miles an hour. And it's kind of scary going that fast, but I got comfortable after a bit. Between pit 11 and pit 12, it was super deep sand, and you'd sort of swap around like the whole time if you tried to go fast. So I had to slow down a little bit in there, and it was super rocky, and I had a, I had two crashes. So the first one, I sort of, I sighted in some rocks and got that, or got this, and then I uh, slid out. It started raining towards the end, and I was in the slick mountains up in the hills, and I got that. Slide now. Basically, the one thing I found out really quick was the dust is super thick and it doesn't move, so you basically have to wait for clean air to gain time so you can pass, and then once you get to that passing point, you just have to hammer down and try and get in front of them as quick as you can because if you don't, you're going to be stuck in that dust. It's like when I came into pit one and I got some fuel from Max and Josh leaving pit, I was right behind an open expert rider and we left right at the same time and I just got on it as hard as I could trying to pass him. I took a little bit of bruise, my arms all beat up and everything, but I'm glad I did it. But this one, the first dude didn't hear me for a while, so I was eating his dust for like six miles. I'd catch up, and then he'd hit his silt bed. I couldn't see, and he'd get far ahead, and I'd catch up, and he just kept doing that. My name is Jack Anderson. I'm from Price, Utah, 17 years old. Been riding dirt bikes since I was three years old. Been racing since I was five. I've always been a, a, a really good rider and a smart rider. Um, not a lot of uh, injuries from stupid stuff over the years, uh, just you know, normal stuff. But uh, I've, I've always had confidence that if, if he believed in himself and was, was confident in, in his writing, then he can go as far as he wants with it. Kid that likes to have a lot of fun, he gets along with everybody he's around. Um, you know, he wears his emotions on his sleeve, and you can tell when he's upset about stuff sometimes and uh, or just having a rough day, but uh, he, he's just an easy going kid. Works hard. My favorite part about riding dirt bikes is just the fun of going out with your buddies and just absolutely ripping, having a good time. Racing teaches kids a lot about life that'll help them out later on. I mean, it's about falling down and getting back up and, and working hard towards a goal and that, that's our main thing that I see out of racing is it's life lessons. I decided that I liked dirt biking when I got my first ever win because I felt that feeling of knowing I accomplished something that I wanted. Coming up all through minis, I raced mini expert. I did Desert Off for two years and Road Moto and I went to Loretta's in 2019. Did pretty good there. I got 13th overall Loretta's and then came back to racing desert. 
raced 250B last year and came away with the 250B championship in the National Heron Hound Series and then racing 250A this year and I'm leading the points, hoping to finish up the year with a win. Kids come out of this at the end, whether they've made a career out of it or not, uh, learning a lot. The more he learns about working hard right now, uh, it'll it'll pay off later in life, and, and that's probably one of the biggest reasons why we kind of got him into racing is it's I did it as a kid, and it taught me a lot about life. Hi, my name is Max Shapiro. I'm 15 years old. I'm from Livermore, California. Tell you about Max. We don't have enough time. He's a uh, he's a goofball in, in, in the best way possible. He's a free-spirited kid, uh, very well balanced kid. In, in, he's got a lot of different interests, and, and he's just he's very level-headed. He's always had a wisdom and a maturity about him that uh, doesn't quite come through when you see his bubbly personality, but the way he thinks about things and the way he goes about things, and emotionally, uh, he's very mature. I Iron Man a 24-hour two times. One time, I was just there like as a joke, like not as a joke, because my dad was training for it. I was like, well, I'm gonna be there anyway, so I might as well ride. And I ended up getting second. And then the next last year, when actually like all the good guys were there, I got third out of I don't know how many. But not only that, um, I've been doing like like some of the NHHA stuff. Like I've just I just got into A, and I was in B. I started B at the beginning of the year. I just got bumped up to A from works and then obviously into the AMA. But I don't I haven't really won any championships because I've always gotten bumped up early. Like my parents have moved me up early, so I, I really don't have any other than my C two hundred championship. That's because I was the only one in the class. When I first saw him ride, you know, you could see at an early age when he was two, three years old, anything with wheels on it, he just gravitated towards and just had a good sense of balance and and when we put him on the bike he could ride and he just loved it. And so you know, I, I don't know that I ever didn't believe. I think it, it, it had always been in the conversations we've, we've always had around our house is, hey, you can take this as far as you want to. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a matter of, of, of skill or talent. It's a matter, matter of, you know, what's between your ears and what you decide to do with it. The people I really look up to, Ryan Dungey and, you know, James Stewart, but like I look, I really looked up to a lot of like the local pros, like all the double A D36 guys when I was on music, like Steven Godman, Dante Mateo Oliveira, and then there are guys like like Destry Abbott, you know, who I spent a week with over New Year's with, or yeah, New Year's, and you know he's a, a great guy. Like I really like you know being around him. He's really down to earth. And he's really cool. I really look up to him. And Kirk Caselli, I never got to meet him sadly, but like I've seen videos of him riding. I've seen like interviews with him, and like I've always looked up to him ever since I was little. I get excited for him because of the work that he puts into it and to see him light up uh, when when he wins a race or, or he knows you know he, he achieved his goal for that race, whether it's getting on the podium or beating a certain rider. And what's great is, is, is he's not ever focused on any one particular person except for that race. Maybe I can beat my dad. So look at this. He beat his dad at one point, 13 years old. Max, you just finished 10 hours. Didn't get off the bike for 10 hours. Oh, well, go shake. <laughs> hey, you ready for Vegas Torino? Feel ready for that? Yeah? You want to Iron Man it? Nice job, dude. Alright, say goodnight to everybody. Night. When, when he does accomplish things, when he hits those things, it, it, it stokes me and it, it, it makes it worth it. At the same time, when he doesn't, you know, the, the lessons, right? The, the racing has a phrase, if you're not winning, you're, you're, you're learning. And so there's, there's joy in that too, um, as crazy as that sounds. I feel like it's really helped me with not only my endurance, but like my mental strength too. It's going to really help for Vegas Torino, you know, just those longer distances and being able to keep focused like with the NHHAs and stuff, like being able to stay focused for that long, which I had trouble in the beginning back when I started on 125s where I would just get bored out there. I'd find myself like, 
whoa, wait, I'm like riding a dirt bike, like I need to focus. Uh, well, like they're saying, 498 mile race from Vegas to Reno. Um, I've been really looking forward to this. I've been wanting to do this for a couple years because um, my eventual goal is to be able to do Baja and stuff. I can't do that until I'm 16. So, yeah, this is, I'm really stoked for this. What up? My name is Ryan Tomaselli. I'm 14 and I'm from Carson, Nevada. <laughs> He's a pretty fun kid. He's uh, not necessarily loud, but he's not necessarily quiet either. He's pretty humble, but you know, he's just all around pretty level-headed. Got into riding when he was three. It's like, I just started him riding. It's like one of those things you just kind of do for, for fun. And then he just kind of took to it, so. You know, we spent a lot of time riding together, traveling together, and uh, I was racing a lot and um, got him into it at an early age. And you know, some people do that and their kids just don't like it or don't take to it. And you know, he he has, and it's like, I can't imagine like, what it'd be like growing up and anything else at this point. Congratulations. And first of all, what is your name? Ryder Thomaselli. Good job, Ryder. I know you're a local guy. Feel pretty good. Do well in your backyard. Yeah, it's awesome. Good job. Who would you like to thank today? Carson Motorsports, SRT, DDC, AEO Suspension, and my mom and dad. And everyone else who I forgot. Awesome. Congratulations. One last time, you guys. Give them a round of applause. Don't leave again. I mean, he was, he's always you know, talented and consistent. Um, but just as he's gotten older and gotten on bigger bikes, it's really like he's get, definitely gone to another another level with things. Basically, I started riding when I was three years old and then started racing the local series around here in northern Nevada. And then I started racing the West Hair Scrambles and chasing that. I met these guys and they invited me to be on their team, which is a pretty big accomplishment. You're supporting your kid no matter what, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's I spent a ton of time wrenching because um, I like to do all my own stuff for the most part. A um, ton of time traveling. Um, you know, like I said, there was a point where I was racing, there definitely came a point where it's like it wasn't about me anymore. It's like, okay, this has to go. You're the focus now, so. No, I, Say it. I'm not saying it's it. part of your freaking feature and your new movie coming up. I don't have a new movie coming up. You do now. Say here, I'm Ryder. Here, I'm Ryder at the Huber World Headquarters in Kelly's Garage. And what? We're gonna shed some taste. My mom and dad, they've supported me. I, I could do whatever, pretty much, and they would support me. My dad's pretty much been my full-time mechanic and probably will be till I get on a team or something like that. I would like to race Pro 250 here in the next one to two years and then try to get on a team in a couple years. The people I look up to, like people you see on TV, like uh, Ryan Dunn, G. James Stewart, Chad Reed, Jeffrey Hurling, Tony Caroli, all those guys. A couple of my buddies, Zane Roberts and Austin Serpa, they're really fast and they both race pro and one of them's on factory beta and they're good. I ride with them a lot and they're good to learn from. Uh, hi, I am Seth Sidor. I am 17 years old and I am from Brentwood, California. Uh, when I was younger, I definitely looked up to my brother just because I knew that he was really fast. I grew up playing stick and ball sports. I rode dirt bikes from time I could walk. 
Um, but for Seth, he kind of grew up at motocross tracks with his older brother. That's what he kind of grew into and that's the only thing he likes to do is ride bikes. So if they don't play any other sport, they don't do, you know, let's keep him out from playing video games all day. You, you get him outside and you gotta do something. So this is what he wants to do. So this is what we do. I think unlike some kids, he's always had a lot of talent, but not the drive for competition racing. He was at the races because his brother raced, and he it was more of a, a social event for him. Uh, once I finally went down and wanted to start racing, uh, I started training with uh, Rodney Smith. He would pick me up from school once a week, twice a week, for two years in a row. He was picking me up from school, taking me to go riding, showing me what I'm doing wrong, how to get faster, how to act around other people, and just kind of invaluable information on how to treat racing as a sport and thinking about it in just in general. Racing Super Mini, I won the NHHA uh, championship in 2019. And then the next year I won the one Mint 400 uh, 2020 and the WHS uh, championship for Super Mini. Well, short term, I'm trying to get through the season, do the best I can um, for Loretta Lynn's that I'm doing uh, the week right before Vegas Arena. Then head right back, see how well I can do Vegas Arena. Hopefully we can win, but if not, hopefully top three. Uh, then finish off the NHHA and WHS series and move up to Pro 250 next year. For them to, to do this uh, at this age and, and just to have the guts to give it a shot, I think, you know, there's that phrase, you know, everybody wants to be a lion until it's time to do lion stuff. In racing, it teaches you a lot about life in general. I mean, there's so many decisions that you got to make out there. You know, you don't you don't see too often a, a group of young kids like this team up to race a big race like this. Shapiro has been trying to get us to race these crazy desert races for a few years now, and I keep pushing them off. Finally, I gave in last year. I, I really want to, well, A, get on a team. So any team managers watching this sponsor me, please be very much appreciated. All of us are between 15 and 17, so I guess we're pretty... 14? Who's 14? Max, you, you're 14? Uh, I'm 14 two, or 15 two months ago. Yeah, I know you're 15, but you're 14? What is this? Yeah. When I first got told that I was gonna do this, I, I was super excited because I've always wanted to do it. And I still am very excited and I'll be excited up to the day we go to the starting line and I know once I'm sitting there starting that I'll get some nerves. Vegas Serena, it's, I think it's 489 miles this year. It's usually 500.
Best in the Desert started in 1984 and was a dirt bike racing association. In 1996, the organization introduced a new race. A race longer than any other off-road race in America. The Vegas Torino. This brought new life to the club as it let the cars and trucks join in. The Vegas Torino has continued to change best in the desert and take them to new heights. And this year, in 2021, a record 406 bikes, four-wheelers, cars, trucks, and first time ever three-wheelers started the race. But we're not here to follow cars or trucks. We're here to follow bike number 217 on their journey through this harsh Nevada desert. This team is believed to be the youngest team in best of the desert history to race the iconic Vegas Torino. Uh, woke up. Basically, brushed my teeth, that was it. Got in the van, drove here, got here, unloaded the bike. Uh, Ate a breakfast burrito for some yeah, breakfast. Like got geared up, then headed over here. Basically waiting now. I'm excited but nervous at the same time, so it'll be good. Yeah. Basically the one thing I found out really quick was the dust is super thick and it doesn't move so you basically have to wait for clean air to gain time so you can pass and then once you get to that passing point you just have to hammer down. When I came into pit one and I got some fuel from Max and Josh leaving the pit. I was right behind an open expert rider. We left right at the same time, and I just got on it as hard as I could, trying to pass him. I took a little bit of bruise, my arms all beat up and everything, but I'm glad I did it so I got in front of him and wasn't having to deal with dust. Uh, basically really hilly and then you drop down into rocks and then you get back up and then you be pin six gear pin and then you have to slow back down get through the rocks six gear pin and then just on and off trying to get into a rhythm super deep sand and you'd sort of swap around like the whole time if you try to go fast so I had to slow down a little bit in there My section, I kind of did right up to him. It's kind of like a loop. I started, I went up pretty much just around Tonopah. It was a lot. First, or the first three quarters of it were all just flat, graded roads. Some sand washes were really fast up. There comes a point in almost every off-road race when you start to question if you will finish. You worry if all the planning, time, and sacrifices were enough to prepare you. So we are trying to get to pit 12 before our rider gets to pit 12. And what's the problem with that? Uh, we left pit nine and 
it's a uh, let's just say I'm not doing the speed limit and I'm hauling a trailer and it's gonna be real close I think we're gonna be late trying to get to, from 9 to 12 before our rider gets to uh, 12 if we miss the pit what does that mean for our rider he's got to sit there because he can't make it on gas to the finish from that point how many how many gallons does he have if we uh, fill him full, if he's if he's a full, he how many needs, gallons? He needs he about a half gallon to make it to the finish. That's he's probably a quarter gallon short, so uh, he needs at least a half gallon to as a reserve to make it to the finish for uh, whatever run out of gas. But it sounds like Paul has somebody that can help hit him or give him a splash of gas if we don't make it. Well, the place is going crazy. And then we're going to talk to 217. Alright, alright. Okay. okay, we got it. We got it. We got it. Is this your partners? This one here? All you guys? All you guys? So, so somebody said this was the youngest team in the history of Vegas Terrain. You guys are all young kids. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know? Where are you from? Uh, Carson City. California. You're from? Right, Utah. Utah. Mixture. And you're from? Brownwood, right California. What the hell you guys, how do you guys all meet up? I mean, what you, you race together? You know each other? Yeah, we all race together and... Good job. Right. So, uh, and then, you know, Scott, what I've seen is the first time in 16 years that a, a, somebody showed up with a sign cheering on their team right there. She's got some sign. What place did you guys get? First, baby. First place.